I think we all remember the names of those paralyzed on the football field. Stingley, Utley, Bird. Their stories are all well chronicled. But what are the others involved in that one life-altering moment? How are they affected by what's taken place? Here's Chris Conley with more on one of those people, former Vanderbilt running back Brad Gaines. The drive takes three hours. And for Brad Gaines, it is a time to reflect silently on all that life has given him. For as he moves south from Old Hickory, Tennessee, across the bridge at Decatur, and past cotton fields along Route 20, Brad Gaines feels very much alone until he gets to the cemetery on the hill in the town of Russellville, Alabama. I go down for both of us. I think he likes to hear from me and I like to hear from him. Brad Gaines comes here three times a year and has done so since 1991. He walks past dozens of southern surnames before coming upon a stone that features not a last name, but a first name. Chucky. Then, as he's done for 13 years, Brad tends to the grave of Chucky Mullins in honor and remembrance. I always take my tools and cleaning supplies and I take care of a stone. When Chucky Mullins died, these men had known each other for less than a year and a half. But one violent moment on a football field had changed them forever, transforming one man's body and the other man's soul. That moment came on October 28, 1989, in Oxford, Mississippi, during a game between Brad's Vanderbilt Commodores and Chucky's Ole Miss Rebels on a play in the first quarter called Slot Right 150 Up. One back in the backfield, three receivers wide right for Romos. Back to throw in the pocket, plenty of time. Man wide open, it's Gaines, he's hit. Fumble! Gaines is going to recover. No, they say incomplete. People that were in the crowd, and it said, man, it, it, was, the, it was the nastiest sound when he hit you uh, that I've ever heard. It was just this deathly thud. Chucky Mullins was the old Miss Nickelback who made the hit. I thought that he was dead. I really did. He didn't move anything. Five minutes goes by. Ten minutes goes by. And I ask one of their players what's going on. I say, I think that he can't move. The impact had broken four of Chucky's vertebrae. He was paralyzed from the neck down. Chucky was rushed to a Memphis hospital, where the first to see him was Carver Phillips, who'd taken in Chucky after the death of his mother. When we walked in, he said, I messed up. You know, he said, I messed up. I told him, no, nah, you didn't mess up. I said, you did good, you know. Chucky Mullins had been an undersized, overachieving defensive back with a winning personality. At Ole Miss, he'd become a fan favorite. And now, those fans responded. Buckets were passed at games. And more than $1 million was raised to pay for Chucky's aftercare. That year, it's time, was the Ole Miss battle cry. And two months to the day after he suffered his injury, Chucky was brought by ambulance to the Ole Miss locker room to address his teammates moments before the Rebels were to take the field against Air Force in the Liberty Bowl. He whispered something, and I leaned down, and he said, what did he say, Coach? He said, it's time. They, it, it just exploded. It's time! It's time. It's time. It's time. Air Force didn't have, it. It didn't have a chance. 
But while the world could see the effect Chucky was having on his team... And another Ole Miss touchdown! Few could see the effect Chucky was having on Brad Gaines. There were many nights that I did not sleep where I would get up in the middle of the night and walk around campus and have this labor on my mind. Brad lost his passion for football and finished the season listlessly. He withdrew from the world, brooding and sick at heart. If you could have spoken about it, what sentences would you have used to describe what you were feeling? At the time, I feel guilty. I feel terribly sad. I feel my fault. What I felt like was, man, I, I didn't cost this guy's career. I cost him his life. Brad had been eager, almost desperate, to meet Chucky. Two months after their collision, he was given his chance. I was thinking, what do I say? What do I not say? How do you begin? He knew what I was feeling. So I leaned down, and the first thing he said to me was, it's not your fault. Chuck had told him, you know, he made the hit, you know. If he had to do all over again, he would have done the same thing. Afterwards, Brad kept calling. He and Chucky kept talking. And a friendship was born. He stayed in touch, you know, all the time, you know. On, uh, want to know if he all right, uh, how we was doing. And just like he said, we, he became part of our family. Following a five-month stay that included a visit from President Bush, Chucky was released from the hospital in the spring of 1990 and returned to Ole Miss as a student. But on a May morning in 1991, a blood clot put him back in the hospital. When Brad got there, Chucky was in a coma. Carver's talking to the doc, and I just see Carver's head. his head go down and I knew what that meant Roy Lee Chucky Mullins died on May 6 1991 at the age of 21. It didn't matter that, that, that I was white or that he was black. None of that mattered. And, you know, it was... You know, I think two people that loved each other. Brad joined Carver as 2,000 mourners packed Chucky's funeral service in Oxford, Mississippi. They took their heartache and exaltation across the state line to Russellville, where Chucky was laid to rest next to his mother. Ever since, Brad has returned to this place three times each year. On the anniversary of Chucky's death. On the anniversary of their collision. And on Christmas. Leaving his wife and children to do so. For even then, Brad comes here alone. So that Chucky won't be. Everybody needs to be with somebody on Christmas. You know. You know, 
He needs somebody too on Christmas. Brad Gaines wants the world always to remember the man of courage now at rest in the cemetery on the hill. And while he and Chucky came together in violence, they remain joined to each other by forgiveness, devotion, and love. Will I ever get over it? No. But is it a bad thing? No. It's a good thing. I'll always do this. It's a good thing. You know, to this very day, Brad honors Chucky in another way. He keeps his number, 38, as part of all of his telephone numbers. And as for Chucky Mullins, a recreational center in his honor was built in his hometown of Russellville, Alabama. And perhaps it's no coincidence at all that it's located just off Gaines Road.